Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I have got a drive here that is fast, and I mean it is so fast you have to wear Kevlar underwear to use it. Well, I guess you don't really have to wear Kevlar underwear, but this thing is screaming fast. This is the latest from Mushkin. It's the Gamma SSD. M.2 and if we look at the back here real quick you may notice it's a two terabyte drive but it says PCIe Gen 3 but it's actually a PCIe Gen 4 so this thing will work just fine on a Gen 3 system but you won't get the speeds uh, the full speed that you'll get running it on the latest motherboard that supports PCIe Gen 4 so that's just a little packaging error there. The sticker here is really correct as far as this being able to support PCIe Gen 4. And actually my test system here is only capable of running uh, PCIe Gen 3. So I'm going to have to sneak this into my son's system because his actually supports Gen 4. So to get the full spectrum of speed capability, I'll have to run it on his system. So there's the drive. So you can see the front and the back. And what I'll do for testing is I'll go ahead and install it in my test system. Now I've got two positions. I got one right there that has a solid state drive in it currently, right next to the CPU. And then there's another one over here under the fan. And I will put this drive here in both of those positions and look at the speed difference and see if there is anything. And then I'll ultimately put this in a different system that's capable of running at PCIe 4.0 speeds. Right now this is just PCIe 3.0. But we'll compare the two and see what they look like. All right, so now it's time to bring the specs up and talk about those. Okay, the first slide we'll look at talks about the optimal data flow, trim support, which is pretty standard, shock resistant, and there's a nice five-year warranty, and the Fison controller. Of course, I'll talk about that here in a little more detail in just a moment. Moving on to the next slide, I pulled out the physical and performance information, and then I put a little green dot next to the items of interest that most people would be looking for. The controller is the new Fison E18. Again, I'll talk about that here in a little more detail in just a moment. But the big thing is a maximum sequential read and write speeds, which we have up to 7,175 megabytes a second and up to 6,800 megabytes a second on the right. That is sky high, that is mind blowing. Those numbers are amazing. Looking at the four kilobyte random read and random write numbers, our IOPS are up to 640,000 IOPS and on the maximum uh, random write, we are up to 630,000 IOPS. Amazing numbers. And the next number here gives you an idea of the life of the drive. Total bytes written is 1,400 terabytes. That's a lot of data, so this thing should last a long time. This slide sort of shows the cross-section from the Mushkin website uh, of all of the solid-state drives that are available. You can see the different series there, starting with the Alpha, the Delta, the Gamma that's highlighted there in green. That's what we're looking at today. The Pilot E, the Pilot, Helix L, Source 2, and Source. All of these are, are different series of solid-state drives that offer different features. And the next little infographic here sort of shows a comparison between the Alpha, the Delta, and the Gamma to sort of give you a perspective of what they offer. Moving on now, we'll take a look at the controller. And the next couple of slides here highlight the differences between the E16 and the E18 controller. Uh, the speeds are just amazing now that we see on the E18. And again, these are typically maximum theoretical speeds, uh, the speeds that you'll see like in a laboratory environment. Typically in the, in the real world, you'll see something just a little bit slower than that. But still, these are really impressive. And on to the next slide, this sort of shows the manufacturing process differences between the E16 and the E18. You go from a dual core CPU to a triple core. Your NVMe level goes from 1.3 to 1.4. And the scale, the size uh, of the manufacturing process, you go from 28 nanometer on the E16 down to 12 nanometer. That's a huge shrink. So that's where a lot of the performance comes in. And now it's time to start some testing. We'll start out on a PCIe Gen 3 motherboard first and look at those numbers. All right, the Addo 
disk benchmarking is ready to go. I've got the right drive selected. We'll kind of watch the temperature. Also, now this particular motherboard has two slots. There's the slot right here that's closest to the CPU, and it actually has a second M.2 slot over here. And uh, some motherboards actually have more than two. They'll have three, and this one just has two. So usually the slot that is closest to your CPU is the fastest one, although it's not, you know, not a huge difference. So I'll run the drive in this slot and test it, and then I'll run it over here and compare the numbers. And I think we'll see that this one is just a little bit uh, faster. The other thing to remember now, this, this board here is uh, a Gen 3 PCIe. So both of these slots only support up to PCIe Gen 3. If you have a newer motherboard that supports Gen 4, uh, and if it has multiple slots, usually, and this isn't for all motherboards, but usually due to bandwidth limitations, the slot that is closest to the CPU will support PCIe Gen 4, and that may be the only one that supports it. So you need to pay attention to that when you install your drive to get the maximum speeds on a PCIe Gen 4 board. All right, so, well, that was nice. Well, there's nothing quite like a blue screen right in the middle of testing. Okay, thank you, Microsoft. Your timing is impeccable. All right, so we're back up and running again. I've got the Autodisk benchmark ready to go. So we will test it in the first slot and see what kind of numbers we get. And we'll also sort of watch the temperature. And I won't bore you as this goes through each step, so we'll come back here in a minute and check it. Coming up on the midpoint, we're holding at about 48 degrees Celsius, and we can see our read and write uh, numbers are pretty consistent. And again, this is a PCIe Gen 3 motherboard, so the speeds will be a little slower than the maximum advertised speeds which are supported on a Gen 4. I know I keep saying that, but it's important to keep that in mind when you look at these numbers. And we're coming up on the last couple of test steps, and we're holding at about 52 degrees Celsius. And there's the last step, so yeah, we maxed out at 53. All right, as you can see, the drive is now in the second slot. I went ahead and left the first one just empty for now and I'll run the testing and we'll see if these numbers in this position are any different. My guess is they'll be just a little bit slower. So we are ready to go. And there's the temperature. Had some time to cool off when I swapped it so we'll be back here in a minute and look at the numbers. Alright we're just past the halfway point. We're holding it about 52. I just bumped up to 53 degrees Celsius so temperature looks to be about the same. Now this is the uh, result from the first test in slot one and you can see slot two is uh, moving right along and first glance looking at the numbers they are pretty close. I don't see a whole lot of difference but it does look like well actually the more I look at these numbers they're actually about the same. So there really isn't much difference maybe on the first first few tests but it sort of levels off so we're running pretty much the same looks like it did get just a little bit warmer uh, as we're approaching the end of the testing a couple more steps and one more after this one so it looks like we got pretty much the same number so we're well within the margin of error so in this particular case it looks like it really doesn't matter which slot you were in and we maxed out at about 59C so a little bit warmer in this slot for some reason but that's what they look like. Alright so those are numbers that you'll probably see on most PCIe Gen 3 motherboards again this is a Strix Z390E gaming motherboard uh, now I'll go ahead and transfer this drive over to another motherboard that is capable of supporting PCIe Gen 4. And I think you'll be pretty impressed with the numbers from that system. So since my system is a PCI Gen 3, I had to go sneak in on this other board. This is an MSI MPG X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. This one uh, is a PCIe Gen 4 system. 
So when my son was gone, I had to sneak in and test this out. So there's the gamma hard drive installed in the M.2 slot. So now we'll go ahead and run the Addo Disk Benchmark tool and look at the speed that this one performs on a PCIe Gen 4 system. All right, so that was a little embarrassing. I realized that I had to move my test drive, the gamma drive, to the M.2 number one slot, which is right next to the CPU. I should have known that when they split the bandwidth on a PCIe Gen 4, uh, only the top slot is capable of running at the PCIe Gen 4 speeds. The bottom slot is PCIe 3, so I had to swap the drives. So no worries, we'll get it tested now. All right, so now we're on the system that has the PCIe Gen 4 capabilities, and we're running the Addo Disk Benchmark software, and we'll see what these numbers look like. All right, the temperature is holding at about 52 degrees Celsius, and we're just a tick past the halfway mark on the benchmarking. And we're wrapping up the last couple of steps. We're at 58 degrees Celsius there on the temperature, and there's the last step, and you can see the speeds. The gamma puts down some impressive numbers. I'm just a tick below what the advertised numbers are, but you have to remember your mileage will vary from motherboard to motherboard, system to system. Still, these are some impressive numbers. The thing to keep in mind though, when you look at the price, this thing is $399 currently on Amazon. Of course, the latest technology is always uh, at the highest price point, and they typically come down over time. And the cost of owning the latest technology and in a two terabyte size like this, uh, of course, it can be a little pricey. This right now is $399 on Amazon. Again, uh, keep your eyes on it because the pricing tends to come down over time. But this is an impressive unit. And for most people, it would be massive overkill. Gaming, you know, you really wouldn't notice the speed. Normal day-to-day -day web surfing, things like that. Your operating system really isn't going to care. Uh, this really goes well beyond the speed limits that anybody would really notice. Uh, on typical usage daily driver sort of stuff. If you're doing a lot of content creation and you need to move large chunks of data back and forth, this will certainly pay off. Of course, you have to be on a PCIe Gen 4 system. But despite it being a little bit on the pricey side, I still love it. I think this is worthy of a big fat Overclockers Club Editor's Choice Award. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.